So hey, I wanted to come on here and talk about my, uh, I've never talked about it, but my encounter with the spirit realm and my encounter with Jesus. And I've never talked about it. You know, I've never came on here and talked about my personal, like my first personal encounter, getting to know who Jesus really is, you know, and it's not a, you know, go to church on Sunday type thing. This is a literally everyday thing, how God was speaking to me, even like at a young age, I was young. I didn't I didn't understand things of the spirit world or the spiritual things. I didn't understand it as a child. And I you know, I would start having these dreams. I remember when I would start having these like spiritual dreams at a young, very young age, like 12, 11, 10. And then I remember I never told nobody. You know, I was staying at, you know, some apartments at like 10 to 12, 13 years old. You know, I would start having, you know, sleep paralysis and you know, I would feel things holding me down, pushing me down. Those are demons. You know, this is real. It's a real thing. It's demons in the spiritual realm. You know that that can hold you down. You know, it's what scientists call sleep paralysis. And this might be a long video. I don't even want to make this video that long. But anyway, uh, I would have sleep paralysis and demons holding me down. And it would be a, it would be a time where I would, I would have this dream. I would have a dream of something scr scratching me and I would wake up with the scratches on me. The scratches is literally on my body. You know, I would be asleep and I would feel things scratching me before I went to school. I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. And I would wake up with those marks on my body. And at a young age, I didn't really understand about, you know, the spiritual realm and the spirit or nothing like that. I didn't understand what life was really about. You know, just a regular old number kid living life. Everything is simple as a kid. You know, you just living life free. And... It, it started when I got about into like about middle school, you know, you know, I started out doing everything the world was doing and having it start having spiritual spiritual attacks happen heavy, like heavy. And it's like no matter where I went, you know, I thought my place, my house was hunted. It was a point in time where I thought my house was hunted and I hate I hated to be at my home. And I realized when I moved, wherever I moved, or like not, you know, wherever I was at, I went to sleep at, it wasn't the house, it was my soul. You know, these demons and stuff would follow, these demons and stuff would follow, they would attach themselves to me. And I, I would think that my house would be hunted because it would be voices, I would hear voices and, you know, I would start seeing, like seeing, like in my, like sleep, I would be awake, but I'm not fully asleep yet. And I'll start seeing spiritual things in the spirit realm. Like I will start seeing people like little girls and apparitions just running running across. And like I'm not fully asleep, but I'm sleeping. But I'm not fully asleep, but I'm sleeping, but I'm seeing these things in the spirit world in the spirit world. And I don't fully understand what's going on at this time. I'm not fully really understanding what's going on until like years later, until I really started to really build my relationship with God and really understand, okay, this world is real. This spirit world that we can't see is very real. So, you know, I started having these dreams when I was like in middle school, seventh, eighth grade, you know, little dreams here, little dreams there, little dreams here and there. And then, you know, when I got to, it was real bad. And then when I got to high school, it was real bad, you know, not living how I was supposed to live, living hellish, and I'm making my way to hell pretty much. And, you know, <laughs> knowing Jesus, but not really knowing him. Like, you know of Jesus, but you don't really know him. Like, the majority, like 99% of Christians, you know, that go to church on Sundays. Like, you just know the word, you know, you know things, you know scriptures, that's it. But it's it's nothing deeper than that, you know. And once you come to to um, to um walk with Jesus, it's deeper than just reading the scriptures. It's so much deeper. God called all of us, not some of us, he called all of us to go deeper, but... All of us have an angel assigned to us. Every single human being has has an angel assigned assigned to us. We got it. It's a good angel and it's a bad. It's a it's a good angel and it's a bad angel. All of, all assigned to every single one of us. And how you live your life, you know, is going to be according to you know what those angels are allowed to do in your life. So and you know don't don't follow the bad angel. You know and you can go and do research on this. And you know I, I encourage everybody. To go look at scriptures other than the Bible, you know, you know, let the Holy Spirit feel you. You know, don't just go believe everything you read because everything you read is not true. But you really have to have the Holy Spirit to go and search out these other books that's really written from God. 
And so, you know, I would start having these dreams and stuff like that. And it would, be, it would, it would come to a point where I had to take this serious because I always knew I had a strong anointing on my, the anointing was strong on my life. And say, so me, God has given me a gift of something great, you know, and I can't fully explain it, but God has given me a gift of something. It's great. You know, God has given me a, a, a great gift, you know, that I can't fully comprehend. So like when I use my gift, something happens on the inside of me. When I start to teach and I start to preach and I start to talk about God, something happened on the inside of my spirit that I can't explain. It's like a fire. Like it's like a literal fire that, that come inside of me that I can't explain. I can't explain it to y'all, but it's a, a fire that comes on the inside of me. And it's a super, it's supernatural. I cannot, I can't explain it to you, but it's like a real life fire that gets it on the inside, you know, and it's, it's supernatural. You can't explain this thing. It's like a real life fire that's burnt. It burns on the inside of you and you just, it, 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 it push you to continue going, to keep going and to keep going and to keep going. And I know it's supernatural. I know it's, it's, it's the spirit of God, you know? Because nobody can do that. No true believer can do this without the Holy Spirit to push them to keep going, to have that fire consistently. Because some people fire, they, they cut their fire out. They cut their light out. They cut the fire out. And it's, it's, it's you know, your choice. You know, it's your choice. But so I remember when I, I would have these dreams and stuff and I'm I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind. You know, I'm, I'm saying these things, but I can't tell nobody about this. I'm thinking I'm crazy. I'm thinking if I tell somebody about this, I'm going to a mental asylum. I'm going, I'm going to the crazy house. You know, I can't talk to nobody about this because it's not many people where I am. I'm at that's spiritual like me. That's these things are happening to like me. So I can't talk to nobody about this because these things are happening to me. You know, I understand the, the call that God has on my life. I have a strong anointing on my life. God has told me what to do with my life. And God's watched over me. I, I mean, and this is this is how I know because God would speak to me in dreams about life. You know, you know, I would talk to God, I would pray to God when I was back in high school and I was saying, like, God is just the one from is this the girl for me. And he would tell me in my dreams, that's not the one. But he would speak in in like symbolism. But he would show me and I would understand it. You know, God would speak to me in my dreams, telling me that this is not the one for you, you know. But it would be symbolic. So God, because God, he does things in, in, in symbols and some, it'd be symbolism. And sometimes he'll tell you straight up, this is not, this is not the one. But for me, you know, God uses symbol, symbolism a lot, you know, for his own will and to help me and to help me with my life. And the enemy, the enemy don't want you to grow. The enemy don't want you to, to see. The biggest thing about the enemy is. He don't want you to believe that there is a world beyond this. The enemy, he's deceived the whole world. The, he, he makes the whole world think this earth, this is it. But it's not. And you can't understand the spirit, the supernatural or the spirit realm without building your relationship with Jesus, without building your relationship with God. You will not be able to understand the supernatural realm, the world that we can't see, which is more real. Even the Bible says the, the, the things that you can't see are more real than the things that you can see. And it's so true because I've seen it. I've seen these things that if, if I spoke to people, they'll think I'm crazy. If they're not spiritual, they'll think I'm crazy. The normal person, the natural person that sees just this, they think I'm crazy. But the person that's spiritual and that's that's spiritual and has had th encounters with God the way that I have, they will understand these things. So that's why I don't tell people about a lot of things that God has shown me. Because a lot of people are not spiritual. They they haven't had those and those real encounters, those real genuine encounters with God the way that I have. God himself called me. You know, I, and I, I wasn't even looking for God. Y'all, I was not looking for God at all. God, he's called me since I was a child. And I remember in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, where it says, you know, you know, I've I've known I've known you since you was a child. You know, I've called you since a since a baby. And I've known you. And, and I would read that every night. And you know, just knowing that God knew me before I was before I was in the womb. Before I was in the womb, God knew me. Eternity has no bounds to it. Eternity knows 
knows knows exactly what's gonna happen in time. You know, eternity, you can't comprehend it. There's no time in eternity. Eternity knows everything that's gonna happen. You know, through the that whole eight thousand years of time that God has placed, God has placed an eight thousand year period for it to be in the time. Eight thousand years, it won't be no more time after eight thousand years. The seven thousand year, around the seven thousand years, you know, Jesus is gonna come back and then do, through the um do do the the millennium reign. He's gonna reign for a thousand years and then release Satan again. Gonna release Satan after that thousand years, that eight thousand years, and after that, he, that's when everybody gonna be cast into the lake of fire. Everybody gonna be cast into the lake of fire, and it's gonna be peace forever on earth. So, you know, you gotta endure. You know, it's it's not easy. Anybody who walks with Jesus, the true Jesus, it's not easy. I don't want no, I don't want nobody to be lied to. It's not easy because one thing God God knows about me, I'm gonna lead His sheep the right way. You know, I'm going to lead them the right way. Not here to make friends. Not here to make friends. Not here to laugh. Not here to play. You know, none of us are here to, you know, live life how we want to live it. Jesus did nothing to please himself while he was here. He did what he did what the Father told him to do, you know. And once you come to a realization that your life is not about you, you know, and once you really wake up, because the Bible says this, even Jesus said this. Anyone who tries to save his, anyone who tries to save his life, gonna lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake, gonna find it. You know, you gotta understand what that really means. If you just living your life how you wanna live it, you just doing what you wanna do, and you not having no spiritual time or no spiritual connection with God, you're not gonna be with them in the next life, the real, the true life, the spiritual life. You know, God gives everybody a choice down here, and it's hard. It's hard. You read if you read the Bible. And go through the older scriptures. These, these prophets and these teachers, Job, they, they went through great tribulation. They went through great tests in this life. All this life is, it's a test to see if you want God or you want Satan. It's a test. And it ain't, it, listen, walking with Jesus, it, it ain't easy. Walking with God, it's not easy. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. I'm not going to come up here and act like one of these false teachers, these prosperity preachers. Oh, God want to give you good health. He want to give you good money. Yeah, but not in this life. That won't even be a currency in, in, in the next the next earth. It won't even be a currency. The things that we know now, it won't even be all like all these false religions, all these false religions, not even just false religions, all these false uh, holidays, Christmas. It's not, listen, if it's not in heaven, why are you celebrating it down here? It's nothing wrong. It's not like it's not the wrong. It's not that I can't say it's 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 paid. At the all the end at the end of the day, y'all live your life how you want to live it. But it's no Christmas in heaven. It's no Easter in heaven. I just gotta be honest with you. Christmas is a pagan holiday. It's pagan. Christmas is a pagan holiday. Why would you want to sit up here and do good? For you know the home of Christmas is like the only day where you want to do good for people while people are out starving the, the entire the entire year. But Christmas and Thanksgiving is the only like two days where you want to come together and do things for other people. I don't understand that. While people are out hungry and starving and don't have a job for throughout the whole year, and this is the only two day one or two days where people want to go. No, you know I don't even like to even celebrate celebrate Christmas, but my family do it, and my. My uh, my future, my soon to be wife, they they tell me to do it. I'm gonna go be with them for it. But as for me, I don't too much care about it. Christmas. Don't celebrate Halloween. Don't celebrate. I don't celebrate none of those things. You know, I don't celebrate none of those things. But it's all as how you, however you choose to walk with God. It's how you choose to walk with God. The only thing is, are you? And I'm not saying these things will keep you out of heaven. Those things won't keep you out of heaven. But if you don't have a real personal relationship with God, a real genuine and personal relationship with God, you won't make it. You know, it's difficult. So it's hard to walk with Jesus. It's hard to walk with God. God said, deny yourself, pick up your cross and deny yourself because, listen, you're not going to want to do this every single day. You, you, The flesh, the body, not going to want to do it every day. You ain't going to want to do it. You ain't going to want to do this every day. That's why you gotta, we gotta run this race. All of us are in a race. We all trying to get to heaven, and it ain't easy to get to heaven. We all trying to get there, and it ain't easy. 
You gotta pay. Listen, you gotta pay us. You gotta you gotta pay a small a small sacrifice. You gotta give a small sacrifice, and that's your life. You gotta pay a small sacrifice, and that's your life to get to make it to heaven. You gotta give up your whole life for God to make it to heaven. And a lot of people ain't gonna do it because it's difficult. It's hard. Ninety nine point nine percent of the people you you see that say they're Christians, they're not Christians. They're not real, true, genuine Christians. They're not. If all you're doing is hearing people say God's love, God's love, God's love, God's love, but you don't you don't ever talk about His wrath. You need to watch out. You need to watch out for those type of Christians. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you, but He'll send you to hell in one point two seconds. He loves you. He does. But He'll send you. more people are going to hell because they ain't hearing the whole truth. They don't want to hear the whole truth. The only the only thing people want to hear is God's love, God's mercy, God's love, God's mercy. God, He does love you. He is a God of mercy, but God is a God of anger. He's a God of hate. He ha He He loves. Therefore, He has to hate because He loves. Cause it's people that people don't like Jesus. People don't care about Jesus. People hate Jesus. People hate the Creator. People hate God. If you see this world and you look at how the world is and the people in the world, they hate Jesus. They mock Jesus. They laugh at Jesus. They hate him. They don't. They don't care about him. They hate him. And I gotta tell you the truth. And this is someone who's had encounters with God. And this is not a. Oh, I go to church on Monday. I go to church on Tuesday. I go to church on. <clears throat> this is a real genuine relationship. This ain't a, a you know one day thing. This is an everyday thing, full commitment, you know. And so you gotta you gotta you gotta be careful. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta be careful. You gotta fight. And this thing about the, the devil, the devil ain't going out going. The devil is not going out the people who are just living their life. If you just living a regular, ordinary life, the devil don't care about you. You're already lost. If you just living an ordinary, regular life, the devil don't care about you. You're already lost. It's the people that actually pray. It's the people that actually build a relationship with Jesus. It's the people that actually work for God. Those are the people the devil attacks, like me. When I start to pray and when I start praying and when I go to sleep at night, the devil enters my dream. Sometimes I, I, I get sleep paralysis. Sometimes I feel the presence of demons. Sometimes I, I feel the presence of demons. And, and, you know, all these things are tests. And anybody who tell you that a Christian can't have demons, a believer in Jesus can't have demons, they crazy. You crazy if you think that a believer can't have a demon. You can have a demon believing in God, believing in Jesus, knowing God, knowing Jesus, you know, and having an encounter with Jesus. You can have a demon. You can have demons. You know, there's a demon, the demon of suicide. The demon of stress, the demon of you know financial issues, all these is spirit. people don't understand that it's spiritual. These things are spiritual. When you have those people on your job, those people that you know you don't like, those people that are always causing stress and causing problems against you, that is spiritual, y'all. That is spiritual. People that that's on your job that that always trying to do do something wrong to you, that is spiritual of the devil. That is spiritual. Everything in this life is spiritual. Everything that happens in this physical happens in the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm is more real than this physical because this physical is going to pass away. And the spiritual is going to be forever. Your true nature is spiritual. And once you come to realize your true nature, who you truly are, this flesh, this body is nothing. This ain't nothing. This, this right here, this is all people care about. That's all people care about. Lost. They lost. This, your parents, how you look. All on TikTok doing this and that, doing that, doing these, uh, whatever they do on TikTok, following trends. That's all they care about. They don't care about their soul. They don't care about their eternity. They only care about what this life got to offer me. What does this this little bit of time got to offer me compared to eternity? Something that you can't even un, 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 you can't even comprehend because you don't you don't seek God. God gave you a free will to to search him for yourself. God gave all His creatures free will. The angels they got free will. That's why they rebelled. Some rebelled and some stayed. Every creature got free will. You're not controlled. God ain't controlling you. He wants you to have love for him for yourself. God wants you to love him for yourself. And walking with God, you can pay up, you can pay a you can pay, you can pay a price. You can pay a sacrifice. And it's gonna it's come, it's gonna come with your life. It's gonna come with your life. And it ain't easy. And it ain't a game. And so, back to me. My encounter. My first really encounter is getting to know God. 
you know, God will speak to me, as I always say in my other videos, God speaks to me in dreams and visions. That was my, he get, he's given me a gift of dreams and visions and to understand spiritual things. And I thank him so much for that, not leaving me blind. Because even, one thing I would say about living, I would want to know the truth. I wouldn't want to know my truth, but I would want to know the ultimate truth to life. Why am I living? Why am I really here? What 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 caused all of this to be here? I want to know the truth, not my feelings. I don't know want to know how I feel about it or what I think about it. I want to know the truth. And Jesus is the truth. God, Jesus Christ is the truth. And this life is fake. It ain't real. This life is counterfeit. This world is counterfeit. It's all a test. I hate that all of us, I hate that my brothers and sisters, and I hate that all of you have to go through this life. Because when you die, and if you remember any, any of my words that I speak to you, you're going to realize, you're going to see, this is real. This life, is this right here, where, where I'm at now, is more real than my life back on earth. I remember when I lived on earth. I remember all the things that I did on earth, but now I'm in a different world. I'm in a different realm. I'm in a different world. Now, listen, God created thousands of worlds before he created the earth. People don't understand God because they don't seek him. God is a gentleman. He's not finna, you know, invite, just force himself onto you. But God looks for a contrite heart. He, he, search, he search for the hearts that really want to know. He search, God search for the hearts that really want to know. That really want to know the truth. That really want to know. God is not going after people who don't care about him. He's not going after those people. He loves everybody, but he's not going after those people. And that's just like a relationship. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you truly care about that person, you're not going to force them to stay. That's not real love. You're not going to force them to be with you. That's not real love. You're not going to have to do all these things for somebody to love you. That's not real true love. Real true genuine love is when you give your you, you give your life for that person. You give your life for that person. That's love. Even when you don't feel like it. Even if you don't want to do it. Even when that person don't love you back. You give your life for that person. So I say that to say this. And walking with Jesus is gonna be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. It ain't trying to. It ain't trying to chase a million dollars. Chasing a million dollars ain't the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. It's not. Following God is because listen, all these millionaires dying without God and going to hell, and you and they leaving. They leaving their money here. They ain't taking. You came in the world by yourself. And once you come to the realization, once you come to realize this, you came into the world by yourself. You came into the world alone, and you came into the world poor. You're gonna you're gonna leave the world poor, and you're gonna leave it alone. That's how I see life, because I know I know Jesus, I know God, I know Him personally. It's not oh I go to church on Monday or I go to church on Wednesday. It's a real genuine personal relationship with God. God will speak to you. So I love y'all, man.